It's basically giant robots playing rock, paper, scissors. It kind of feels like a Rude Goldberg device. There's very little RNG in the game. It's a lot of fun. This is the first auto battler that I've ever played. It's called Mecha Bellum. Uh, if you've played auto battlers in the past, you're going to have a lot more information than I do. But I've been playing for about a month so far. I'm kind of hooked on it, and it's very, very fun. It's been a great thing to do in the meantime, while I personally wait for Last Epoch, the action RPG, to come out of early access. So this game's kind of caught my attention. I'm going to play a game here, but first I'm going to go over the unit modifications and kind of show you what this looks like. I've been using a website called MechaMonarch.com. Uh, that person set a part, uh, put together a guide kind of describing the units, and I used it when I was a brand new player in order to understand what was going on with all the units. Since then, I've watched a couple of the top streamers who are people who have like the little Twitch icon up here. There's a handful of them that you'll see streaming with some frequency on Twitch.tv. Um, and you can ask them like what their loadouts are, and those people talk about it. So that comes, you know, that kind of describes what my loadout is. So the, for the people who are watching right now live, I'm going to type in exclamation point loadout and you can see what I do here. So when you're playing, if you're a brand new player, you will uh, you'll unlock currency in order to unlock these tech configurations. It's basically your onboarding process and you will have enough currency in order to unlock everything. And at some point after a couple of days of playing, you can just spec whatever you want. So each unit that you have here Nothing, nothing's OP. There are things that are strong. There are things that I like to complain about. Nothing's OP. The game has relatively good balance to it. Every unit, you can spec them with four different things. And then as you play the game, uh, you can you can purchase these technologies. So these are my loadouts. My characters don't have these by default, but it gives me the option to, uh, to spec into these during the game itself. Also, the game is very pretty. So there's tournaments. There's an in-game tournament which makes me wish that there were in-game tournaments hosted in every game that I've ever played, because I think it's so cool. But, uh, and then the last thing that we'll say before we click on the game itself is that the tutorial for this game, which is called Commander Academy, is quite good. They go over a lot of good stuff here. There's even some, like, PvE that you can work through, and this is a nice introduction to the game. It's not, like, the, you know, it's not S-tier onboarding, but it's, like, A-tier. I've, I've experienced S-tier onboarding to a video game. But this is, this is very good. I'll, I'll give this an A for onboarding process here. Let's go to multiplayer. Let's go play a game. Pull it up. Cool. So uh, I am about 1,500 MMR, which means that I am firmly okay at this game. If you're brand new at the game, you're going to be like less than 1,000, and then people just do crazy stuff. 1,500, I feel like I play against people who know what they're doing, and I'm like 50-50 against my opponents, which is honestly pretty good, right? If you're at like 2,000, you're like expert. And if you're 2,500, you're just like S tier. It's like very, very good. So that, that's my opinion of the random um, uh, MMR rating that got introduced about a month ago from this point. So we'll load in. And at the very beginning, we get four cards across the screen. We're going to pick one of those cards. The cards have a leader on top with a corresponding amount of HP and then two random units under it. So these are going to be like starting units that we can have here, about here. Um, the, the leaders each slightly change your economy. So increase, I guess not change economy, places change your stuff. This is worth about a hundred gold. I can explain that later. Elite spec for me is really hard to play because your units start out stronger, but they all cost more. Quick supply is fine. Aerial is fine. Um, I can do quick supply here with like some marksman, some sledge. Marksman's like single target, sledge is like AOE. So it's like a nice little balance there. So here's our first round. We're going to start with 400 gold here. We're going to immediately look at the bottom right corner of our screen in order to recruit no, or like unlock units and then purchase some units. But before we do that, let's pan over here to see what my opponent has. They have a bunch of medium units. So like I anticipate that my marksman's going to be good because marksman's pretty good against like big single things, which is like these arc, or sorry, these arc lights here on the ground and then these birds, these phoenixes here. Uh, so they're probably going to buy some kind of chaff they're probably going to buy some kind of small unit. And I don't really have... I guess I have some AoE. Sledges are pretty good for AoE. I could take that. Um, very often, maybe like 90% of the time, 95% of the time, if I don't already have crawlers, I kind of just like buying crawlers. Crawlers are good as a level 1 unit. They're like these little little puppers. They're like these little, little dogs. 
You don't really need to level them up. You don't really need to give them technology. You can later if you want to, and there's lots of good situational decision-making in this game. But uh, we're just going to buy two of these things, because if we get an advantage, crawlers are really good at pushing the advantage. They also just, like, they run really fast, and they do a lot of damage, even though they're melee. So I'm going to put them right behind this tower, because I don't, I don't really want to be giga-aggressive. I don't want this. But having them right behind the tower tends to be an okay thing to do. So... This is my first time hearing the in-game music. It's not bad. Where are we putting these guys? Hmm. I guess we can go like this. I don't know. You can do like a symmetrical start. Or oh, shit. Whoops. Ran out of time. This is fine. You can do like a symmetrical start. You can do an asymmetrical start. But I think this is fine enough. I'm going to run out of time this game. It's fine. So I like to do a nice aerial perspective here. I saw that his marksman immediately started shooting my sledge, which is not good for me, because I want his marksman to be shooting chaff as much as possible. So I need to uh, I need to change that slightly. I'll probably recruit one extra unit in order to make his marksman target something else, so that his marksman is relatively worse. So that's like the kind of thing that I'm thinking about immediately. In between each round, you have these cards that pop up, and your opponent has the same cards that you do. So what's my opponent going to do? What am I going to do? I think there's a lot of good looking stuff here. He's a giant spec and I'm a quick supply. Giant means that he can unlock giants really quickly and the senior manufacturing is busted. So we are fighting an uphill battle given that he is about to take this. Shit. Well, I'm gonna take laser sights because I think I think having laser sights with a, a unit with extra range, check out check out how much this range changes. Like, yeah, it's like just a little bit of, a little bit increased range right there. I think that's a nice thing for us to have. Um, let's see. What are we doing here? We have 56 seconds. I said we wanted like an extra unit. What if I do... I, I kind of want Mustangs as well. Hmm. I could do this. Having a couple crawlers in the front here. I don't really expect him... Oh, actually, he has a... It's got this thing right here. It's kind of annoying. You go Storms here. Storms against a bunch of slow units is pretty good. Yeah, I would have liked that. I'm going to put these, like, on the flanks. That's, that's not the best thing I've ever done. But let's go here. Click. Storm. Click. Yeah. I'm going to move them out slightly. I'm, I'm really worried about a sentry missile right here. If he places a sentry missile right there, which is a consumable, it's a one-time use, uh, it would be really good against me. So. Eh. Me talking so much caused me to make a bad decision. That's eh, fine. We'll work through this. So my opponent... Wow! My opponent didn't take the senior manufacturing thing? That's wild to me. What? They didn't? That's got to be a mistake, right? Ooh. All right. So, Chalk went up the home team, baby. My opponent went wasps. So, they've got tons of air units right now. So all, all of my sledges and all of my crawlers don't do anything against them. But even if uh, even if my ground units can't pressure the wasps and the air units directly, they can still pressure the towers. And if you pop a tower, if you destroy one of the enemy's towers, it doesn't give you gold or anything, but it gives a debuff. And that debuff says enemies take increased damage, deal less damage, and have reduced movement speed. And if you can pop a tower in the middle of a fight, it is really strong. I think I'm going to skip there. The speed spec is pretty good. The fact that the speed spec showed up and has 100 gold. Like, 100 gold is approximately what that's worth. I guess it's 50, 150-ish. Because you get 50 gold by skipping. So it costs 100, approximately 150 to be a speed specialist. You can kind of conceptualize it like that. Um, it'd be nice to go storm colors, but it'd also be really nice to go this. So let's purchase two of these, and then we can talk for a little bit. One, two... Three, four. Maybe that's okay for us. 
I'll go five. Like one, two, three, four, five. So these Mustangs, they're anti-air units, but they're also good at killing very small things like crawlers. And I'm putting this in, putting them in this position, which is like a pretty meta thing to do because it helps to cover my flanks. You'll note that for me, I also have access to my opponent's flanks on like their deep left side and their deep right side. I can just place units over there beyond turn one. And uh, the first turn that they're placed, they load in over like five or six seconds. But the subsequent turns, they'll just stay alive. So, um, I'm going to go armor. You have these two towers here. Let's kind of talk about those towers as these things load out. The command tower on the left side is a bunch of temporary buffs. Things that only last for one turn. And the research tower, the tower on the right side, there's the sentry missile that I was worried about. Costed 50 gold if he wants to do that every turn, but you know. Oh, he went Overlord. Ooh. Oh, oh, my marksman with the laser sights paying off in spades. Holy moly, was that convenient for us. That was so convenient. Woo. Did he take, yeah, Morgan, he, he did just take the 50 that round. Wild. Look at that. So the tower on the right side is all permanent buffs. So I took a permanent buff of 10% increased health. So he could take this thing again. Super heavy incendiary. Incendiary is a cooldown. It, uh, it, it just like eats up ground units. He should take this. I could take range. I, I think I'm actually going to take range here. Um... And if he's already unlocked Overlord and he's got Wasps and Phoenixes. I I might go air units myself because like the problem of me investing in a whole bunch of Mustangs is ground units are pretty vulnerable to um, random bullshit like ignited ground and fire and incendiary and Vulcans and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I might do it right now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm not sure what to do here. This is, this is kind of tricky. Like, do we want to go more Mustangs? I think I'm going to. I'm going to go more Mustangs like that. And then I've got a hundred. I'm I'll, I'm gonna buy the other temp or the sorry the other permanent buff increases the attack of all units by ten percent. While we're talking about this and waiting for the timeout, I should mention all increases to damage and health are additive increases, and all decreases are multiplicative, which is interesting and I like it. I wish it were more apparent that that were the case, but I do like it. Okay, so once again, our marksman is is attacking this. My opponent should put something in front of his Overlord so that my Marksman locks onto something else. That should be something that he does. But uh, I, I told you that I was worried about my opponent buying a Vulcan, and this is exactly you know, exactly why, right? So a Vulcan is really good against ground units because he lights them all on fire. And if I had like a hundred Mustangs, he might just kill all of them because Vulcans are very strong against like cheap, squishy ground units. Heavy Mustang is kind of interesting. I don't think Heavy Mustang's the answer. Maybe. Is it? Is it? Is it? It decreases range? I kind of like range. I don't think this is the answer for us. Sable's tech on hit, increasing movement speed. I kind of like Electromagnetic Blast, but I'm not going to take it. I'm just going to skip here. Like smoke. Smoke doesn't do anything for air units though. Smoke does do well against this. So he's got like snipers, air units, and Vulcans. Um, I think what we want for that is a bunch of storm callers. Because storm callers will take out the Vulcans with like long range artillery and will also pressure the uh the marksmen. So I, I think the right choice here is to do this. We'll put these preemptively on the right side because he's probably going to buy a Vulcan on the right as on the, sorry on the left side. Probably going to buy a Vulcan on the left side as well. I'm going to go range here. 
Mass recruit another one. I just what if what if I put like one in the middle? Put two in the middle. Fuck them. And like these, these will help to target that. They're kind of spread out. They're not gonna like hit by anything. I'm gonna buy one shield because I'm a coward. Ship it. <clears throat> Neat. All right. So worth noting that ground effects don't go through shields. So this is like fog, which decreases your range by half. But okay. So his overlord is still dead, which is very good. Our storm callers that we preemptively placed on the left side and we bought the range upgrade for are already killing the Vulcan over here. So that's good for us. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The things that I've been working on personally, I don't think I buy enough chaff. And I and I think I buy technology more aggressively than other people do. I think those two things are on my mind. Orbital Javelin is an expensive three round cooldown. It doesn't get stopped by shields and it deals uh, 70,000 damage. 70,000 is enough to kill this Vulcan here. So I think I'm going to take this. Pop this here. And I, I anticipate that he's going to buy something to put in front of his overlords. So I'm actually going to preempt that and see if I can end the game right here. So I'm going to go like this. And like this. Because he, he should put chaff in front of the overlords so that my marksman... Don't immediately target it. But we'll see about that, won't we? Uh, so I just bought range on the marksman as well. What are we susceptible to? A flank? A flank, even if it dies, would distract my units. It would distract my units and maybe hurt our plan here. So maybe maybe a flank is something that I should care about. Because I kind of want to end the game, right? Like, we're, we have a huge advantage here. My opponent's kind of on the back foot. I could go into debt and get 200 supplies this round at the cost of 300 supplies next round. But I'm a coward, so I'm not going to. Let's see what happens here. Alright, so here's our Rude Goldberg device. He went mothership. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, it's almost good enough. So I was talking about those two sentry missiles that I placed. All right, let's see how it goes. The wasps died from the mothership upgrade on the overlords. My marksmans have giga range because I purchased range for them. So they should still be able to target the mothership and blow them up. I have all these storm callers that have huge amounts of range. And he's got these two birds left that are just being picked apart by the marksman. That was... That was pretty clean. It's pretty solid. So after this is done, let's click on View Battlefield. You could... Um, I, I don't know if there's a clean way of doing this, but there's a, there's a practice mode in this game as well. So what you could do is like maybe take a picture of this or I think you can use the replay. I don't know exactly how the replay works. But you could, you could take this and rebuild it in practice mode and then try different purchases against it and see how they work out. I don't think there's an automatic way of doing that. If there is, let me know, because there should be, and that would be amazing. But um, loading up this replay and then rebuilding it in practice mode and trying out different things is something that I've been meaning to do because I think it'd be really, really strong as a way of learning. Um... Yeah, look at that. Look at what, what could my opponent have done here? I think I think a flank would have been really strong. My flanks are basically held together by these Mustangs. But like, imagine if they went like, I don't know, an overlord over here. Because like, as soon as the Mustangs are dead, this is dead, this is dead, this is dead, this is dead. And then there's one marksman. And then just like everything else collapses, right? So like, I, I have all this range that I'm attacking my opponents with. With my range upgrade Stormcallers, my range upgrade marksmen. 
But like if my opponent came at me quick from the left or right, or if they even just like used a mobile beacon, you could I, I call it the wiggle strategy of like putting a crawler in front and then using a mobile beacon to ship it over to the left side where it like follows whatever uh line you set out for it. I think the wiggle strategy would have been good against me here. I think blitzing me with a rhino could have potentially been good here. I think these overlords were like a little bit too little too late. But uh, that was a pretty clean game. I'm, I'm impressed that this one turned out so well, even though I was talking during the whole thing. In any case, the game is fun. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm solidly okay at it. But I, I still have fun. So it's $15 right now. If you want to try it in the future, once it comes out of early access, it'll be free. Hopefully they do some kind... Of, listen, I like MTX. I don't know if you like MTX, but I like MTX. Hopefully they do some kind of like monetization where you can recolor the explosions of your storm colors so that they're pink. <laughs> because that's the kind of MTX that I want, dude. I just think that good games, even if they're free, deserve to have some like MTX that I can pay for. Make my explosions pretty colors. Cool. I'm going to keep playing this game. If you like it as well, let me know what you've been enjoying. And let me know how you defeat hackers plus fangs, because I still have trouble with that. I'll see you next time.